a couple of different objectives for this exercise. The main one is to understand dimensioning and understand dimensioning in line with British standards. The second objective, I suppose, is to create a drawing that's dimensioned in the exact same way as the diagram of page 12. And this object is the item that's pictured on page 12. You'll have access to this file and you'll create an orthographic drawing with all the dimensions as shown on the page in the book. Start by going to the application button. Start a new file. Remember and press the metric tab. Come down to where you can find the 2D drawing files and choose the one called a bsi.idw. Because I've got the file in the background, it should come into this automatically. Before we begin, I'm just going to do things like get rid of the border and the title block. There's a second exercise that will show you how to control these things. If we go here and we right click, you can press delete and it should take away the title block. It's the same with the border. If you right click on it, you can press delete. Now we've got a blank page. When we print this, we'd like it to be an A4. If you go into the Drawing Resources folder with a little plus, you can find a folder called Sheet Formats. If you open that, you can see A4 Landscape, One View. I'm just going to double click on that. I'm going to press OK and it will give me another sheet. Unfortunately, it always gives me back my border and my title block, but I can get rid of that quite easily. Just right click on it, press Delete. Again, right click and press delete. Because I've got my file open in the background, it's brought in a view. It's guessed that I want to look at it end on, and I don't, so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to press delete. I'll get a warning message, which I just press OK and ignore. I'm going to press this button here to get what's called the base view. If I move the cursor into the drawing area, you can see it's trying to bring in the object, but I don't want it this way around. I want the top view of it. That's it orientated the same way that it is in the book. I'm just going to click here, right in the middle of the page, and that'll do fine. I'm just going to right click again and press OK. Now, before we start to add any dimensions, we need to change the parameters in something called the Styles Manager. Go to the Manage tab at the top and find this icon called Styles Editor. When this loads up, we're going to make some important changes. Once you've made these changes, you can save this file and you can keep using it as a template for other drawings that you do. The first thing I'm going to change is the view we always draw things in something called third angle projection, but Inventor tends to put things in in something called first angle projection. If you press this button here at the top where it says default standard BSI, you'll see these options and we want to go to the tab here called view preferences. You can see that we've got projection type here is lit up as first angle. Simply change that to third angle. Now we're ready to make some changes to the dimensions. Over on the left here, we've got dimensions here, and we've got something called default BSI dimensions. Press on that. It's just asking me if I want to save the edit. Of course, I've changed this option, so I'm going to save, so that's now con confirmed. Everything looks okay here. We've got units and millimetres, as we'd expect. We've got the decimal marker, which is actually a comma for British standards dimensioning. The first tab we want to change things in is the display. The gap here, B, we want to change that so that it's slightly further away. Change this number to 3. The other thing we're going to do is make our dimensions a different colour. If we can press this button here, I'm going to change it to green because green's done in the book. I'm 
Now we're going to go to text. We'd like the text to be green as well. The text attached to dimensions in Inventor is called note text. So we're going to change that. Press this little pencil to edit the style. Again, it wants to confirm that we can save the edits. And we're just going to change the color here to green. You'll notice it's now taking me down to note text, so I have to go back up here to default BSI dimensions. Again, save edits. These buttons here, these correspond to the alignment for dimensions on things like radiuses and diameters. I'm particularly concerned about the ones for diameters. I'm going to change this one to the top box there called horizontal. And I'm going to change this one to the first box down, first line centered. For radius, I'm going to change it to this one here called horizontal. And I'm going to change this one to the first one down called first line centered. Over on the left here we've got angle dimensions. I'm going to change that to this one here called hor uh, Parallel Horizontal. I'm going to move along now to Options. Also here where it says Diameter Dimensions, press the button in this little box here. This will mean that we get a dual dimension line inside a circle when we're dimensioning to show a diameter. The only thing I've got to do now is to change the colours for the centre marks. It's a bit more awkward. So if I go to centre mark and press centre mark BSI, press save edits of course, there isn't an option to change the colours. Actually to change the colours we have to go down to the layers tab. Press the plus and you can see all the different objects that you could put in a drawing. It's now just a simple case of finding centre mark and changing the colour of it. So right now it's going to be black. If I click on here, I'm going to change it and I'm going to make it red. Now I'm going to press done and I should be able to start dimensioning and annotating my drawing. 